Hello everybody, welcome to Best of British Blackmore. Today we're going to be making a bacon and onion suet pudding. Uh, uh, we're going to be making this as a result of uh, some suggestions that were made on the Facebook page. A friend of mine, Nikki Valor, wanted to see this made, probably hasn't eaten it in donkey's years, uh, neither have I. Um, my nan used to make it, so we're going to make it today. It's really simple, really easy, very basic ingredients. Come over and have a look at the ingredients and uh, we'll get cracking. Okie dokie, so these are our ingredients. Um, this is all you would need to make the, uh, make the pudding. Uh, we've got some bacon here. Um, you can use streaky bacon or you can use the lean back bacon uh, that we've got here. Um, I've got a couple of packs. One packet is smoked bacon, the other packet is unsmoked bacon. I'm going to use a little bit of both because I want the, um, the different flavours of the two. One big onion. Um, we're going to chop that up in a moment. Um, to make the actual suet pudding base, you've got some self-raising flour. I've got 200 grams of that here. Um, you've got some suet. Uh, this is beef suet. Because um, it's got bacon in it, I don't see any point in using the vegetarian stuff, but you, you could if you wanted to. Uh, there's 110 grams of this. Um, we've got some uh, salt and pepper. Uh, you've got a couple of um, oxo cubes or stock cubes, whatever you need to use. Um, there's some butter, there's some garlic granules, um, you'll need your um, pastry brush. Uh, we've got some water to make up the pastry, you just mix these two together. And then the other things that you'll need that you'll find really handy is some uh, greaseproof baking paper. Um, and you'll need some kitchen foil as well. Um, so I'm going to prepare the ingredients, chop all these things up and I'm going to show you how it goes together. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the uh, suet pastry or the, the, the pudding base. Um, it's very, very simple. Um, we're going to start off by getting the 200 grams of self-raising flour. And uh, we just need to sift this. Make sure we get it all out, I'm sorry. Uh, sift this into the bowl. It's important to sift it. You want to make sure there's absolutely no, no lumps and bumps in there. Otherwise, that will just get stuck in the pastry. You add all of the suet in one go. Good couple of cracks of salt and then slowly but surely start to add the water. Give it a good mix and what you're looking to form is a kind of nice um, doughy pastry kind of consistency. Uh, we're going to need a bit more water than that. Let's give it a decent stir. And there we go, you can see it's going to start to take on a kind of dough-like consistency and this is, this is what we're looking for, this kind of consistency here. Um, and it's not going to be a precise science, uh, you don't want it too sticky, I've probably made it a little bit too sticky here. So all you need to do is get a little bit more flour. And just add, add a little bit more. You're going to need to keep the flour with you anyway because um, we're going to be rolling this out onto the work surface in a minute and you use the, uh, the flour just to make sure that it doesn't stick. Once you've got it into kind of this, this star consistency, you can even get your hands in there if you want to. I'm going to add a tiny little bit more flour. Get your hands in, obviously make sure they're nice and clean. And this is the perfect texture for this. So it's malleable, it's pliable, it's still very soft. And that is exactly what you're looking for. So in a moment, um, I'm gonna roll this out on the work surface. You'll see that and we'll start to add the ingredients and start to build up the flavors in there. Okay, so now we've got our pastry made and our other ingredients uh, ready, to, uh, ready to go. We're gonna start to construct this pudding. So first of all, uh, dust the work surface with a little bit of flour. Now you wanna make sure that the um, so base doesn't stick. There we go, give it a nice good coat of flour. Then we get rolling pin. We want to start to roll this out a bit. Now what we're looking for is um, a square, so like an oblong um, shape. Um, so give it a good roll out. Um, there's probably loads of people out there who've got wonderful techniques for rolling things into a square shape. Um, I don't. I tend to cheat, and then when I get it to the point that I that I want it, 
I get my knife and then I start to cut, cut the sides away and then just throw this back onto the top there. Um, this doesn't really need to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty as you can see. Um, what we're looking for here more than anything else, because I make a terrible mess, what we're looking for here more than anything else is a nice base sprouting, our main ingredients to go on to. Um, this is getting on for what we want, a little bit thin in places, so I'll just even that out. Uh, come back in a sec, what we're going to do is I'm going to transfer this onto a greased piece of um, uh, baking paper and then that will help us roll this together when we get the ingredients in there. So give me two secs, I'll tidy this up and we'll be back. Okay, there we go. So um, like I said, it doesn't look that pretty, but that's the basic shape that you're looking for. Um, what I've done is I've put it onto some greaseproof paper here and then underneath this greaseproof paper, we've got some tin foil. Um, the reason we're doing that is because the way we're gonna cook this is we're gonna steam it. Um, the tin foil is really good at keeping the moisture out, so you want to cover it up, it will retain the heat, which, uh, which helps it to cook, but it will also stop the water from the steamer getting inside. Um, so let's start to build this up, and it is very basic. Um, first of all, we're gonna start with some butter. So um, pour some butter on, be quite liberal with this, this really adds to a, a lovely flavor, and start to work it into the sides. Uh, the butter is also important because we're, we're going to put, put this together almost like a, like you would like a jam roly poly or something like that, something similar. And what you want is you want the pastry to start to stick so it doesn't start to fall apart. The butter is going to help help that happen. Um, it's quite a lot of it as well and you know it would just add, add to the taste. So there we go. That's nicely covered. Get it onto, into all the sides here, and it doesn't matter if you go over obviously onto the greaseproof paper because it's greaseproof anyway, isn't going to make a difference. Um, next, uh, you want to get some seasoning on there, so get in there with your salt and pepper. I like quite a lot of pepper. You don't want too much salt because obviously the bacon that we're using in here is quite salty anyway, um, so you know, just a little bit of that and a good sprinkle of some, some garlic granules. Again, just adds another, another taste of that. This is something that my nan uh, definitely wouldn't have put in here, um, but you know, I think it's good to uh, have a bit of a modern take on an old fashioned recipe. And then very simply, start to layer the bacon, uh, sorry, the, the onions first uh, on here, and you wanna cover the whole thing. I mean, you want this absolutely brimming with, with the ingredients. Um, they just add to the flavor so, yeah, so much. Um, don't scrimp um, and don't worry about it being messy or um, untidy you know you're not looking to win any uh, Michelin star awards with this with the presentation of this food it's all about the taste so give yourself a really decent layer of, of the onions try to separate uh, the onion pieces out so that they don't undercook when they, when they steam the bigger they are the longer they'll take to cook um, if you kind of uh, separate them out uh, like I'm doing here they'll cook through They'll go nice and translucent, and you'll get a lovely flavor from them. Um, so we've got a lot of onion in there. That's, that's lovely. I might add a bit more in a moment, but let's start to get some of this bacon on here. Um, all I've done to the bacon is I've trimmed the rind off. Now, I haven't taken the fat off, because as you guys will know, where there's fat, there's flavor. So the fat is still on there, um, but with a, with a sharp knife, I've just taken the rind off, which is uh, the, the hardest piece. Um, on the outside of the bacon. That doesn't really cook down uh, that well in the steamer. So I've cut that off. Um, and as you can see, again, uh, you're just looking for even coverage across this whole thing. Uh, again, I'm not looking to make it um, look pretty. It's not gonna look pretty, but it's gonna taste fantastic. Now I'm using all of the bacon. There's a total of eight rashes of bacon here, which is a lot, but um, as you know with bacon, it will, uh, contract when it cooks as well, so it's quite a thick piece there. Let's get this last piece on, and then finally, our final ingredient is the oxo cubes or the stock cubes. So just crumble the stock cube over the top of what you've just done, and this adds a lovely, lovely meaty, meaty texture. That's plenty. 
Now for the awkward bit, now for the bit which I've kind of been dreading because I'm useless at that bit, this bit, it's uh, rolling it together. Um, going to try and do it as you would do a jam roly poly. Um, use the grease proof paper here to help you out as well. Um, give it a tip and a roll. Hopefully it hasn't stuck to this paper too much. I'll just start to roll it over and fold it over on itself. It has stuck to the paper typically, but not to worry. Um, again, I'm not going to win any design awards with this, but there we go. I'm actually quite pleased with that. Uh, tuck the bits in at the end here and tidy it up a little bit and then get the greaseproof paper and fold it back over the other way. So you're wrapping it up. Again the greaseproof paper will stop the water from the steamer getting in it as well and then just tuck the ends in. And then finally the last bit is get the cling film, that's the uh, silver foil and then roll it back the other way. Um, you'll notice that I've overlapped two pieces here, uh, that doesn't matter, that's absolutely fine. Roll it together into a nice big parcel, fold the ends together rather than pinch them if you can, and fold the ends of the um, silver foil down in the same direction, because then what we're going to do is when we put it in the steamer, we're going to make sure that the folds are facing upwards so that the steam comes from underneath and through. So there we go. That is as best I could hope for at the moment, so I'm quite pleased with that. This is going to go into a steamer, I'll show you that in a moment, and we're going to steam it for about two and a half hours. So here we go, this is the steamer. I've got it set for two and a half hours, which is quite a long time for a steamer, so you need to um, keep an eye on the water levels in there. Fortunately, uh, this steamer comes with a handy little device where um, you can pull out this little tray the bottom and add more water to it without having to take your um, take your steam pots off so that's quite handy um, I would say that this probably will need a top up kind of halfway through so I set myself a little alarm to come and have a look at that you'll see that I've set the pudding in the middle of the steamer so it's not directly above the heat and it's not um, too far away from it um, so it should get a nice decent even cook um, these, uh, in the old days, my nan would have wrapped that up in, in some uh, tin foil and then put it in some muslin and kind of hung it from a, from a, from a large pot of water. Um, I don't have a pot that large, to be honest with you, and I think that these, uh, these things are, are, uh, are perfect for the job. Um, and they're cheap as well. I think this one was less than £20. Pounds. Um, so I really would advise uh, going out and buying one of these because it's perfect for these types of things. You can do suet, uh, suet steak and kidney puddings in here as well and I'll make one of those and, and show you that in here. Um, so two and a half hours, um, I'm going to cook some potatoes with this, some peas and some gravy and then we'll be ready to tuck in. So it's been steaming now for two and a half hours, I've taken it out of the steamer, I've taken it out of the um, silver foil and all we're going to do now is finish it in the oven for 10 minutes um, inside the greaseproof paper. Um, just to crisp up the outside a little bit and give it a bit of a bit of a crust to it. So there you go, it's still in the grease proof. It is cooked, you can feel it's nice and firm. And we're just going to finish it off in the oven. Okay, Daddy, this has been in the oven for about 10 minutes now, and it's time for the unveiling. So come and have a look, see what we've got. And that is just about perfect. You see, the time in the oven has given it the brown um, texture on the outside. And there you go, you've got that lovely suet pastry there as well. So I'm going to cut a little bit off of the end here. And then I'm going to cut another piece here. You'll see it just falls apart. It's not really a, a crispy pastry you're normally used to. It's a suet pastry, so it's really soft. It's got luxurious, it's wonderful, this stuff. And then we tip that out on there and look at that. There's bacon, there's soft onions. And there's a lovely pastry in there. Let's get a little piece of this. Nice big mouthful. Mm. Perfect. Just like my name used to make, and really, really easy to make. You've seen how easy it is. Give it a go. Cheers.